Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 16.3 RC or release candidate has been out for a few days. RC is the final version that's released to developers and public beta testers. And if there's no additional issues, they release the same version to the public a little bit later. We're expecting that next week. We'll talk more about that a little bit later. We'll also talk about a few new features in 16.3 and also talk about the overall experience and what to expect next. So as far as the overall experience, there's a YouTube community poll where I ask you about your experience. We'll talk about that battery life and more. And at the time of this video, there's over 9,000 votes. Now, as far as new features, well, a lot of new features that weren't mentioned by Apple really come to the HomePod and HomePod mini. So HomePod mini gets an update. If you have one of those with HomePod OS 16.3, when that releases to the public, we gain a bunch of features. So if we go into the home app and let's go back here. And at the top of the home app, you'll see, we now have climate. We actually have a humidity and temperature sensor that were enabled in the home pod with home pod OS 16.3. So that's something that's new. And then also if we tap on the climate, we can see the humidity. So you'll see the humidity right now is 36% and 74 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's great. And then if we scroll down and tap on our home pod tile, if you have a home pod, you'll see this here, tap on that, scroll down to new alarm, tap on new alarm, tap on play media, tap on choose media, and you'll see an ambient sounds menu. Under ambient sounds, you have fireplace, forest, night, ocean, rain, stream, and white noise. So we have some new sounds there as well. So that's something that's been updated. Also, many people apparently may have issues updating their home pod. If you have advanced data protection enabled, Apple actually is addressing this with a support document. You can see here, it says how to update home pod after you have enabled advanced data protection for iCloud. I actually had to log back into my phone with my password. Let me move the home pod away since it keeps triggering here, but I had to actually log back in. It seems to work okay for me, but if it doesn't, you may need to update it using a Mac or PC. Let me move that further away, Mac or PC, and then update it. But it's giving you more information if you're having issues. I'll link that in the description if you need a little bit more help updating your home pods when it releases to the public. Within the home app, we had a new architecture for the home architecture that Apple removed and is bringing back. So it looks like they're going to be bringing that back based off of something they had on the home pod page. So based on the home pod page, if you scroll all the way to the bottom with the introduction of that new home pod under section 10, there's some information about this with the new architecture. So you can see here, we can just search for architecture. And if we find that match, you'll see here that sound recognition, which is a new feature requires updated home architecture and will be available as a separate update in the home app. And it also mentions sometime around spring. So we're still waiting for that. Maybe it's a 16.4 update change, or it could be later this spring. So that's something that's just in the footnotes of the new home pod that they introduced. So I thought I'd mention that. Code in iOS 16.3 also shows that Apple is still working on Apple Music Classical. So we've been waiting for that for a long time, a separate app since they bought Prime Phonic, we still haven't seen that app. So we're waiting for that with iOS and it looks like maybe with 16.4, we'll get the classical music app or maybe we'll get it later with iOS 17. Now, as far as new products this week, we had a lot announced by Apple as well. We had some new Macs, which were upgraded to M2 Pro and M2 Max processors with the MacBook Pro 14 and 16 inch. We also had an upgraded Mac mini with the M2 and M2 Pro options. And we also had a HomePod get updated and then sort of brought back. So Apple had the original HomePod, they got rid of it, brought out the mini, and now they've brought this back. People that have initially reviewed it say it sounds great, and it's available now to order, but you'll get it in February on the third. So that should be great. And then we have a bunch of different features, like I mentioned with the temperature and humidity sensor and updates to Siri and more. So lots of different things there and even new watch bands with the black unity watch band and matching watch face with the wallpaper that was included with this update. So all of those things were announced this past week and we just had a bunch of them without an event. So that seems like something they actually probably cut from last year's event with the max and the home pod as well. So it looks like they just cut that right out of the event and they were going to announce them late last year and instead did it this year instead. 
Now, as far as anything else, well, as far as features, we have that security key update where you can use FIDO enabled security keys, and there's not a whole lot of changes in this update. However, we're really hoping for stability. Siri should be fixed in CarPlay. Also that issue where you turn off your phone, turn it back on. If you have a 14 pro max, if you had lines that should be repaired with this update. And one other thing that Apple didn't mention specifically is the battery update. If you're using AirPods. So the AirPods case was showing zero. Most people have told me that this is fixed in this update. So you'll see, they just showed up like that for me. And then they connected and it's properly showing the, the case battery here at 11%. It's not showing up here for some reason, but maybe if I take these out, let's try that. You'll see it showed up here, but it didn't show the case, but for some people it's showing properly and others, it's just not showing at all. It's showing zero. Most people say it's fixed. Apple didn't mention it specifically though. So maybe they'll fix it in an update, but let me know if it's fixed for you. Most people are telling me it was fixed with beta two. I haven't seen a difference myself. Also the camera bug Apple said nothing about. This makes me think they're still working on it where it sort of darkens photos with the 14 pro and pro max. However, others have complained with older phones as well. Let me turn off one of the lights in this room and then we'll see if maybe deep fusion enables and see what it's like. So we turn off that light. What I'll do is snap a screenshot here and then we'll take a photo and see how it processes it. And let's turn off night mode, see how it processes and let me know what you think after we took the photo, what it looks like. Do you think it looks better or worse? Or do you think they've fixed this? If you've had experience with this, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Now, as far as other bugs, well, the iOS swipe bug returned after a day or so for many, same with me, where maybe you're playing music, let's drop the volume here, playing music, swipe home, it goes to the dynamic island, and it still stutters over and over. Why Apple hasn't fixed this with the release candidate is a little baffling for me. Maybe they haven't used it and found this to be an issue, but it seems to pop up for many people. So I've seen this over and over and it seems like it comes back. Sometimes it's there. Sometimes it's not a reboot. will fix it. And then it works again. As far as Wi-Fi, I've had no issues with Wi-Fi on this update. The same is true with Bluetooth and overall connectivity. I've actually had really good connectivity. There's a modem update in this one as well. I've had no issues whatsoever with 16.3 RC. So that's great news, at least for me. Let me know if you're having the same experience. Most of you say it's quite good though. Also, there's a couple odd issues if you have an Apple TV with the latest remote. So if you have that new remote, you can see it on the screen here. Oftentimes it will say it's disconnected. I've had this issue. Others online have had this issue. That's not specific to iPhone, but it's just something odd. I thought I'd mention now, as far as overall performance, performance seems to be quite good. Other than that stuttering when it's not stuttering, ProMotion is fast. Swiping is quite fast. And the initial Geekbench scores were quite good as well. So if we go into the history, you can see what I ran the other day. So if we find January here, you'll see it was 1,866 for single core, 5,368 for multi-core. So that's quite good. It's actually a little bit better for single for multi-core about the same for single core, but overall it's quite good. I've really had no complaints for performance and the same is true on older devices as well. Now, as far as battery life, battery life for me has actually improved. I know some people have said the opposite, but let's take a look here. You can see battery. My battery health is at 99% and you can see the overall cycles here on the left using coconut battery. That's just a Mac app. I've mentioned it many times before. It's not in the app store, but you can install it outside of the app store. And in the last 10 days, yesterday, I had three hours and 42 minutes of screen on time or screen active time, three hours and 31 minutes of screen idle time. Some people have had different experiences though. The day before I had six hours and 25 minutes of screen active time and used a little over 75% of my battery. For me, this has gotten quite good. So last time you'll see here that I used a lot of battery. I only got four hours and 39 minutes the day before four hours and 41 minutes. So now I'm getting six or seven hours at 75% usage. I'm having a lot more battery left by the time I go to bed at night as well. As far as what you had to say with battery life, 
This was sent in by Abishek and he's using an iPhone 11 Pro Max with 95% battery health. He had nine hours and 56 minutes of screen on time and has about 90% of his battery used. That's quite good. 10 to 11 hours seems to be normal for that phone and he's getting good battery life overall. So that's great to see. It's not the same for everyone, but most people do report battery and overall stability seems to be much better with 16.3. Now, as far as the overall heat of the device, this has been staying nice and cool. Most people say the same. I typically tell people not to worry about it, but it is staying nice and cool to the touch. Even with the screen on while recording this video the whole time, it's not very warm at all. Let me go ahead and place it face down and let's take a look with the thermal camera. You can see with the thermal camera, if I move it over the hottest part, we're at about 31.2 degrees Celsius. And in Fahrenheit, you can see at the hottest point, we have 90.2 three or so. So it's staying fairly cool. It is a little bit warmer than I showed the other day, but I have been running tasks on this and again, showing this in video, but it's still nice and cool to the touch. No issues there. As far as when to expect iOS 16.3 to release to the public, typically Apple will release their major updates on Monday. Now this could change of course, but we'll see it probably Monday or Tuesday and it will be released to the public for everyone to install. Then after that, and of course that will be released along with watchOS 9.3 and iPadOS 16.3 and all of the others. And then after that, either later in the week or the following week, we should have iOS 16.4 betas. So then we'll move on, see what Apple's got as far as future updates. And then of course, iOS 17 in June. I can't believe we're already not that far away, about five months or so from seeing iOS 17 for the first time. Maybe Apple's keeping a lot of those features to themselves and maybe they'll just push them in June and we'll see maybe a redesign or some change or just a stability update. I know a lot of people would really welcome stability overall. So we don't really know what Apple has planned. We don't know of any changes as far as device support or anything else. Now, also one thing I wanted to mention is we should also get next week, iOS 15.7.3. I have 15.7.2 on this eight plus, and it was working fine. One thing to note though, is when you look at the developer site, there is no 15.7.2 or 15.7.3 downloads for the eight plus anymore. So whether or not the eight plus will get the update or Apple just expects you to jump to 16.3 is hard to say with the previous version, 15.7.2, we had the IPSW files where we can install the update as developer. We no longer have that with this device. We only have iPhone seven and older devices. So Hopefully we'll get that update for those of you that want to stay on that. But either way, that's what I've found this week. I don't see a whole lot there. Also, one thing I wanted to know is the reason we know iOS 16.3 is coming out next week has to do with a press release from Apple. They have Apple newsroom. This is their website where they have press releases and under the press release for Apple celebrates black history month with unity collection and exclusive content tap on that one. And you can scroll down or the fast way to find this is just type iOS and then 16.3 and you'll find it on the page. It actually says that the new unity iPhone wallpaper for the lock screen will be also, or will be also be available. There's a typo in there next week and requires iPhone eight or later running iOS 16.3. So they're telling us it's coming out next week. Now I have been using iPad OS 16.3 and also I iPad OS 16.2. The overall experience seems to be quite good. It's nice and smooth. And I really have no complaints as far as the overall usability on an iPad. Typically battery is my only complaint, but it seems to be getting better six hours or so. So this is last year's M one iPad pro and it's running the latest beta. It seems to be working just fine. No complaints at all, but just no really big updates with the latest update there. Other than the fix for the pencil for free form. Now let's go ahead and take a look at some of your comments. And at the time of this video, there's over 9,200 votes and 138 comments. 18% of you are currently on iOS 16.3 RC. 73% are still on the public version of 16.2 or older. 4% are on 15.7.1 or two or older. And only 1% are on 14.8. 
and then 4% are on something else. Matt Mills said 14 Pro Max, 16.3 RC. It took away a couple gigs from my phone. The message crash bug I had is fixed so far. Battery seems a little better for me. No other annoying bugs as of yet. Debbie said iOS 16.3 RC is mostly fine for my iPhone 14 Pro and iPad Pro, but there are a number of concerning issues, including sleep focus mysteriously turning off in the middle of the night. Yesterday, I wasn't able to start an app on my iPad until I restarted my iPad. J340 said RC is massively improved battery life, 14 Pro Max. Massive. Glad I installed it. I was skeptical at first, but usually my battery on iOS 16.2 would drain 10 to 20% in four hours. But with the RC, it's only gone down 5% good. Roberto said, I'm never into betas, but I wanted to try out this time with iOS 16.3 RC since 16.2 has been a mess. So far, so good on my 14 Pro. Tap to wake works normally again. Prediction on my keyboard seems more accurate and battery seems to drain slower while heavy use. Gabriel Moses Lee said, 16.3 RC has been good for me. My phone is not heating up as much as 16.2. Battery life and performance is so good. WatchOS 9.3 battery is not draining as fast compared to WatchOS 9.2. And so that's everything with iOS 16.3 RC, and if it's ready or not is really hard to say. Most people say it's quite good compared to previous versions of iOS 16, but over time and with millions of people using it, it can really change the overall experience for a lot of people like the previous iOS 16 versions did. Hopefully this is much more stable compared to all of the others. Let me know your experience in the comments below, what you're looking forward to with iOS 17. Of course, if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, Paper, it will be linked in the description as it always is. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.